This is Twit. Let's encrypt. Uh, last week, hit a milestone. They issued their billionth, wow. with a B, billionth certificate. Um, and what's interesting is the time scale of this. I thought this was an, an interesting opportunity to remind our listeners of just how much reluctance and inertia <laughs> this industry has. It's just, I mean, we, we're, we're always talking about it. We're seeing instances of it all the time. Um, Netscape was the originator of SSL, the secure socket layer, which was an addition. It was a, it was a, it, it provide authentication and privacy thanks to encryption over the existing TCP connection. So your your browser, your Netscape navigator, would connect to a server over with a standard TCP connection. And then once they had had connected, the browser and the server would negotiate a an encryption layer on top of that existing TCP connection. So so to create an authenticated and private tunnel through which they could then communicate that happened and that and that added the s to the http giving us https in wait for it 1994 is when that happened but its adoption is a repeat of this classic tale of of internet adoption reluctance that we keep seeing. I have in the show notes a table I found showing the percentage oh, of... <laughs> I pushed the wrong button. Oh. <laughs> I, I did find the nose wall outlet for $35 is from This Is Why I'm Broke. <laughs> it's kind of the story of my life, Steve Gibson. It, All right, I'll go. I'll does, get the other one. <laughs> does, it does exist. So it's a real thing. It's a the, real thing. A nose, nose outlet. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so I found a table. Show, okay, now, so HTTPS became possible in 1994. Uh, let's see, what would it be? It would be 19 years, no, 21 years later in August of 2015. 21 years later, August of 2015, HTTPS was at 6.71%. Half a year later, 9.39. August of 2016, 17.76%. Six months later, February 2017, nine, nearly 20%. Okay, okay. in 2017, February of 2017, we're in, we just left February of 2020. So, so three years ago, three years ago, it was one year in five connections were secure, 19.96%. That's how recent this shift has been. So, um, and, and in fact, it was when the connections crossed the 50-50 point, there was some notice of that. That was the summer of 2018, only as recent as that, which is just Amazing to me again to to look back and see and 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 this is the Alexa top million sites that these stats were generated from. So of course there's no doubt that it's a com that uh, it was a combination of factors that that got together to finally after what did I say 21 years of like nobody really caring and in fact remember remember when we were talking about Fire Sheep. Sites had the ability to switch you into HTTPS when they wanted to solicit a username and password. But then, inadvisably, they would switch you back to HTTP even though the cookie that you had obtained to create a persistent session was now in the clear. If you were HTTP, Everybody could see the session cookie, and that's where Fire Sheep demonstrated how easy it was to just commandeer somebody's session in any situation where you were open Wi-Fi, like in a, my – I keep using Starbucks as an example. Um, you could just say, oh, 
and just take over their session by looking at their cookie and using it yourself. And you would now be logged in as them. So, uh, and of course it was Snowden, the, the Snowden revelations of how prevalent the actual eavesdropping of things that were going on was that finally caused the industry to get off its butt and take privacy, internet connection and communications privacy more seriously. And I mean, a there, little credit to Google, because didn't they say, we're not going to, if site's not HTTPS, we're going to not give you as high a ranking in the search yes, rankings. And that, I think that yes, must have been have, the reason, right? Yeah, I, I have that in, in, in my show oh, good. notes. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, so yo, no, no, it's good. For, for one thing, let's encrypt, solve That had the, made it easy, right. Yeah, yeah well, it, it made it free, Right. which was one of the arguments. It was like, I mean, there were old school, you and I were talking about how old we are, you know, but the, but we're not crusty really yet. No. There were crusty Unix people that just as a matter of principle, they said, I'm not paying for a certificate. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, you know, the, 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 the Stallman types is like, right. you know, it's like, no. So, so, okay, now you don't have to pay anything thanks to Let's Encrypt. Um, and then, of course, there's the, the annual hassle arguments. It's like, well, if I just could buy it once, that'd be fine. I mean, I was in that camp once upon a time. I was like, rah, rah, rah. you know, it'd mean like, you know, I'm just I'm paying for bits. You know, I'm not paying for anything, except now I really do appreciate the fact that I am I am paying Digicert for the for the for them taking the time to verify I am who I am claiming I am for the certificate that I use. Um so, um, you know, Let's Encrypt, as we know, was started as a nonprofit effort by the uh, ISRG, the Internet Security Research Group, which was multiply sponsored by the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Cisco, Facebook, Google, the Internet Society, the, the, those are the IETF guys, uh, Mozilla, and a strangely enough, a French cloud service provider, OVH. They're the backers behind Let's Encrypt. And it's been, by every measure, after you know, a billion certificates issued, an overwhelming success. This gave us ACME, which is the reverse engineered acronym, has <laughs> had to be Automated Certificate Management Environment is what ACME stands for. ACME is the automation protocol which verifies your domain ownership and then automates the issuing of a certificate to a bot that you've got on your server that accepts the certificate and installs it. And so this all now happens without you having to do anything. Uh, as we know, Let's Encrypt's certificates have a 90-day lifetime because thanks to freeness and automation, once you set it up, it just runs by itself and it takes care of everything. Um, um, so uh, the other impetus is we're, as we've been c covering on the podcast, our browsers are beginning uh, to incrementally shame and strengthen their shaming of any and all non-HTTPS web pages even going so far as to say that if you don't have HTTPS, the, you, the page is not secure, which, you know, technically is true, but, you know, there are pages on the net, you could argue, that have absolutely no need for security. But doesn't matter. Moving forward, browsers will be shaming websites. And, of course, as you noted, Leo, Google did, went one step further. And they added whether a whether a page was delivered over a secure connection as one of many signals which they funnel into their page ranking algorithm. In and because I mean, you could argue that that a site that is delivering all of its pages over a secure connection may be more worthwhile. I mean, it's arbitrary, but, you know, Google's trying to find things to, you know, pull together in order to create a ranking. So it's, you know, it's one of the things that that Google has officially said they're using to rank pages. So sites that want 
a stronger rating will be using a uh, you know a certificate of one form or another. So anyway, um, uh, I, I know that I may seem to be harping on the issue uh, of let's encrypt and the fact that to, to sort of to remind people that they are um, uh, they are automating the 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 proof of domain validation only. Um, and they are issuing certificates for any domain, including, for example, playpal.com. Um, and I guess since no one but we geek techies have ever really understood the distinction among DV, OV, and EV certs, I do see the logic of of zeroing the assertion being made by domain validation certs, meaning that if you have a bot which is is issuing certs to anybody who can prove that they control a domain, then that cert by definition no longer means anything other than it's providing security, it's, it's providing encryption for that domain. Yes, it is verifying you know, it's providing authentication to the domain, but the domain could be anything. Uh, I mean, it could be a forged spoofing site, but at least now it's a secure forgery. So, so good. Um, uh, I did a little bit of research because I was sort of curious. Research conducted back on March 20th of 2017. So here we are, March of 2020, three years ago revealed that Let's Encrypt had, among their billion certificates that they've issued, issued 15,270 PayPal certificates, meaning certificates either containing the term PayPal or some visual look-alike phrase, obviously being used to spoof the authentic PayPal domain. Um, PayPal's certificate, I went over and looked at it last night when I was putting this together, is an extended validation EV certificate obtained, as is mine, from DigiCert. So imagine how pay the real PayPal feels about having 15,270 lookalike certificates issued to secure spoofing domains created only to confuse their users. And this is why I believe it would be useful and meaningful to users to have our web browsers eventually indicate when a website is protected. Yes, it's protected. It's encrypted. But it's an, a certificate that was obtained by an organization that some human took a few minutes to verify, like PayPal or like GRC. Uh, again, nothing against Let's Encrypt, except the fact that they're automated, 100% automated, unfortunately, means that they are a target for spoofers. And obviously, not just it could happen, but it is happening. 